Today we're going to simplify radicals. I think you're going to find this easy. Anything under this sign is a root or a radical. If there's no number here, a square root is understood. If later on we have a 3, I'd be taking cube root. I could possibly take a fourth root. But today we're just going to deal with square roots. So, first thing you have to know are your perfect squares. A perfect square is a number multiplied by itself. So, I start with 1. I have 1 times 1. 2 times 2. 3 times 3. 4 times 4. 5 times 5. 6 times 6. 7 times 7. 8 times 8. 9 times 9. 10 times 10. You have to be able to recognize your perfect squares from 1 to 100. I can take the square root of any of them evenly. If I want to take the square root of 16, it's just going to be 4. I want to take the square root of 49, it's going to be 7. I want to take the square root of 81, it's going to be 9. So I can take the square root of any perfect square. So now the problem comes if it's not a perfect square. Let's say I have a number that's just prime. Let's say I have the square root of 7. If my answer comes out to be the square root of 7, there's nothing I can do with it. I can't take the square root of 7 evenly. I can't break it down. It's just the square root of 7. Remember, prime means it's a number whose factors are only itself in 1. Let's say I want to take the square root of 11. Nothing I can do. 11 is prime, so it just stays. Let's say I want to take the square root of 2. I can't take the square root of 2 evenly. I can't break it down. It just stays. I mean, I could take the decimal value, but for now, we'll just leave it under square roots. So now we have to simplify radicals. Let's say I have the square root of 12. I want to break 12 down into two numbers that multiply together to give me 12, but here's the catch. One of them has to be a perfect square something I can take the square root of evenly. So I can't use 6 and 2, then I'd be stuck. 6 is not a perfect square, neither is 2. But I can use 4 and 3. I put my perfect square part first, because then it becomes a coefficient, and you put that in the front. So I can take the square root of 4 evenly, and it gives me a 2. So now my answer is 2, the square root of 3. Which, remember, there's no sign here. It means 2 times the square root of 3. Let's say I have the square root of 27. I want to break it down into two numbers that multiply together to give me 27. But one's a perfect square. So I look, and it's got to be 9 and 3. I take the square root of 9. When you take the square root, it comes out out of the square root sign. So my answer is 3, the square root of 3. Make sure you don't leave this under the square root sign. Let's say I have the square root of 45. I want two numbers that multiply together to give me 45, but one's a perfect square. has to be one of them. So it's got to be 9 and 5. I take the square root of 9, which is 3. I get 3, the square root of 5. Now let's do 1 with a coefficient in front. Let's say I have 3, the square root of 8. Now I'm only simplifying the radical, so my 3 stays. i got to break 8 down into two numbers that multiply together to give me 8, but 1 has to be a perfect square. So. It's going to be 4 and 2. I can take the square root of 4, which is the whole number 2. No sign in algebra means multiply. 2 times 3, I'm going to get 6, the square root of 2. All right, before we just go make, try some more, we'll just do 3 to make sure you can handle these. All right, let's do the square root of 20, and I'll change it to 2. And then we'll do 1 with a coefficient. Let's do um, 4, the square root of 24. 
So now, I break the square root of 20 down into 4 and 5. I take the square root of 4, 2 comes out, so my answer is 2, the square root of 5. My 4 stays. A common mistake would be if someone took the square root of 4. It's not under the square root sign, it's just a whole number, so my 4 stays. I break this up. It's got to be 4 and 6. I take the square root of 4, which is the whole number 2. I multiply these. I get 8 to the square root of 6. Now, I do look at 6 and think in my head. I could break 6 down into 2 and 3, but I can't take the square root of 2, and I can't take the square root of 3, so I don't. So my answer is 8 to the square root of 6. We'll just do a couple more before we go to letters. Let's say I have the square root of 50. I break it down into two numbers that multiply together, give me 50, but remember, one of them has to be a perfect square. So if it's easier for you to write the perfect squares at the top of your page, do that. But it's gotta be 25 and two. I take the square root of 25, five comes out of the square root sign, so it's 5 the square root of 2. The only one that might cause you difficulty is maybe the square root of 48. Because I could do it two ways. If you break it up into 4 and 12, then you're going to take the square root of 4 is 2, and you're going to get 2 the square root of 12. But it's kind of like simplifying fractions. I look at my 12 and I go, huh, I can simplify 12. So I'd have to keep my 2, break my 12 down into 4 and 3, square root of 4 is 2, multiply these, and I get 4 the square root of 3. Or, if you saw this, it depends on what goes on in your head, I could have broken it down to 16 and 3 right away. And then I would have got 4 the square root of 3 a little faster. But I think the only one that might give you a little trouble like that is 48. Okay, or the hundreds. Let's say I have the square root of 300. Yes, 25 goes into it. But 100 is a perfect square. So... If I make this the square root of 100 times 3, it's just faster. So I'm going to get 10 the square root of 3. If I have the square root of 700, I'm just going to make it the square root of 100 times 7. And I'll get 10 the square root of 7. Then let's just do 2 with coefficients. Let's say I have 5 the square root of 12. If you remember, my 5 stays. I'm only simplifying my 12. So I get 4 times 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So I get 10, the square root of 3. Let's say I have 7, the square root of 24. My 7 stays. I break this down into 4 and 6. The square root of 4 is 2, so I get 14 the square root of 6. Again, inside I think I can break 6 down into 2 and 3, but I don't because I can't simplify it, either of them.